So we looked at redox reactions. We should be at the point now where we understand that a redox reaction is nothing more than a reaction that shows a transfer of electrons. We've seen these before, okay, in making ionic compounds. Nothing new. Some of these reactions we've seen a lot before. Now, what I will say is single replacement reactions are classic examples of redox reactions. And we're going to learn to identify them today. And how do you identify a redox reaction? Well, the first skill that we learned about was that we had to be able to assign the oxidation states of our elements of, in a redox reaction, or any reaction, to see if it is a redox reaction. In this reaction, I took zinc metal, okay, which is, by the way, zinc, like any element, has a zero charge. It's an element. Protons equal the electrons. So if I drop my metal, okay, into my acid, there's my reaction. What's happening is the zinc, the solid metal who holds off electrons loosely, is passing the electrons to the H+. So here's my zinc. Here's the protons in solution. Electrons are being passed from the zinc to the H plus ions in the as an acid solution. The H plus is gaining electrons and they become hydrogen gas, which is bubbling. Now, yes? If you left the metal and the zinc in Yes. Right now, the zinc is becoming aqueous ion. So, thank you for pointing that out. Zinc, by giving the two electrons, becomes zinc plus two. Metals don't dissolve in water, but when they become ions, they do. Because water is a positive and negative side to it, it can interact with the ion. Water has a tough time interacting with a solid metal, so it doesn't dissolve. Right. Well, the substance being reduced, and let's talk about that for a second, are two um, terms we learned from yesterday. Since we have the first skill down, Okay, the skill is assigning oxidation numbers. Assigning oxidation numbers helps us identify redox reactions. How do I identify that this is a redox reaction? Well, I can see that my oxidation numbers are changing, which means electrons are flowing. Here's another easy way, pay attention, to identify your redox reaction. If you can find one zero in your reaction, you have a redox reaction. Because if it's a zero on one end, when it, exactly, so you, if you find a standalone element in any of your reactions, and I will ask you today, is this a redox reaction? You could assign oxidation numbers, or you can see if you can find a zero. Case in point, remember this reaction? I took hydrogen gas, I reacted with oxygen gas, those were the balloons, and I met, wind up making water. And this reaction looked like this. Is this a redox reaction? Yeah. Absolutely yes. I can assign oxidation numbers or I can see what? I can find myself a zero. If it's a zero on one side, it's not a zero on another side, which means electrons are flowing. So an easy way to identify redox reactions at this level is to see if you have a standalone element or a diatomic molecule. If you have just one, we know it's redox. Why do you know it works? Because if it's a zero on one side, it's becoming something other than a zero. Its oxidation numbers are changing. Now, that was the first skill. And we're going to practice that a little bit today. Second skill, assign, writing half reactions. This is, a, this is a must, skill number two. Now, once you've assigned oxidation numbers, once you've identified this to be a redox reaction, what you do is you see who is changing. Zinc zero is going to zinc plus two. So this is going to be part of my half reaction. Why they call it a half reaction? Because to pass an electron around, someone has to give it, someone has to receive. I had Elvira, the outermost electron, out here yesterday. Whoever loses Elvira got oxidized. Whoever accepts Elvira gets reduced. So I'm just going to write out the elements and their ions that change. Notice zinc is on the what? Reactant side. It stays there. Zinc plus 2 is involved in this chemical, but I'm going to pull it out. 
H is plus one, so I took it out. H zero is over here, I took it out and I put it, so I'm, I'm pulling apart the reaction, the one half that is giving, which we call the oxidation half reaction. And if you forget what oxidation means, Leo the lion says, grrr. Leo is losing electrons. This guy is losing electrons. How do I know? The electrons are on the product side. Didn't we learn about exothermic reactions? Mm -hmm. They give off heat. Where is the heat in an exothermic reaction? Reactant side or product side? Product. product side. So if the electron has to be in the product side to make this balance, then you know it's oxidation. But you know what's even easier? What can only metals do? Lose electrons. So if you've got a standalone metal, that can only oxidize. Now if you want to write half reactions, you can, but if you can just help yourself remember that this metal can only become positive. You will never find a metal that becomes negative. So if you've got a standalone metal, it can only oxidize. And where did the word oxidation come from, by the way? I did this in the lecture, not yesterday take-home lecture Monday night. Oxidation came from the action of oxygen on metals. Now, if I had zinc hanging out by itself, now I have zinc in this reaction, so if this was zinc and I had oxygen, we know because we have so much oxygen, it's the most electronegative element that we have in large quantities. We know fluorine is the most electronegative atom up here, but we don't have fluorine for good reason, a good thing, because it would be deadly to us in our environment in large quantities. We have a lot of oxygen. But what does oxygen do, being a non-metal, being small? It attracts its own electrons, and it what? Wants yours. So oxygen pulls electrons from metals. It forces metals to oxidize and become ions. And the ion form of metals is nowhere near the form that they were as an atom. When iron loses electrons. It becomes iron plus two. And the rust form of iron is so much weaker, okay, or the oxide form. If I make this iron, because we're so used to having iron things like our car, if you scratch your car, okay, and you expose the iron, the oxygen will pull electrons from it. So the effect that oxygen has on metals by pulling electrons from it, gaining electrons and non-metal from the metal, nothing new here, we call it oxidation. It got oxidized. Now, it wasn't O2 doing it, but it's like the oxygen. By the way, Fe loses 2 becomes Fe plus 2. Oxygen gains 2 becomes Fe negative 2. What's the formula? And that's rust. Far different than iron. Back in November, I said to you, when atoms bond, they lose their individual properties and gain new properties. Rust is far different than iron, solid iron. No, it's weaker, it's crumblier. Obviously, we want to prevent that, so we put paint, okay, on top of cars to prevent the oxygen from doing that. If you have a scratch in your car, you should put some paint to prevent it, because oxygen will have the action of oxidation. So the word oxidation means it forces things to lose electrons. In any case, back to what we did yesterday. Now, we kind of ended up on this. Okay, so we have zinc going up in charge, which means I had to put the electron on the product side so that both sides of the half reaction are the same. H pluses became H zero. Its charge went down. That's what reduction means. The word <coughs> reduction is means that your charge is going down. H plus goes to zero. Very important. Now, I have the two electrons on this side because for an H plus, to go to an H0, I need electrons to balance out the side. Your check in putting the electrons is so that both sides of a half reaction have the same charge. Okay? I started out with zinc going to zinc plus two. Then I realized there's two electrons involved, and I put the two electrons here. So the negative two and a plus two is zero. This is zero. When I did this, the H plus to the H zero, I see, well, this is plus two on this side. This is zero, I need two electrons, okay? Reduction is gaining electrons. Electrons are in the reactant side. Oxidation is losing, and if you forget, Leo the lion, losing electrons oxidation, 
gaining electrons reduction. If you're gaining, you're in the reactant side. If you're losing, in the product side. Now, here comes the four questions that I didn't have quite enough time. And I make this very clear. In these four questions, the answers to my questions are always where? Right. We care who is selling and who is buying. We don't care what happens after. It's only against the law to sell and buy. So I care about that. So who got oxidized? Specifically, who lost electrons? Do not say zinc plus two. That's the effect of the oxidation. You would say, you could say zinc. Now zinc implies zinc zero. But you better be specific and say zinc zero. Who got reduced? Who specifically gained electrons? The H plus. Don't say hydrogen. If you say hydrogen, you're implying that. So be specific and choose. If you have no clue, and it's a redox question that oxidized, pick something that is in the what? Reactant side. Now, the agents. If I'm an oxidizing agent, I help others get oxidized. I help others lose electrons. So I must be taking electrons. I brought Elvira out here. If I pull Elvira out of Antonio's hands, because he wants to hold on to Elvira, if I pull Elvira out of your hands, I'm helping you lose the electron. But what happens to me if I am pulling from you? I myself get, yeah, my charge goes down, and I gain the electrons, and I get reduced. So the oxidizing agent is the one who got reduced. I'm a reducing agent. I help people gain electrons. So I throw Elvira the electron. I take my Elvira the outermost electron and I throw it to you. Okay, that'd be zinc. I'm helping you gain electrons by me losing. And losing electrons is oxidation. Zinc is the reducing agent, but no, no, zinc zero. Okay, got to pick from here. Now, you, I said yesterday, you hear agent, think what? All, all, opposite. You hear agent, think opposite. Oxidizing agent, that's the one who got reduced. So that's why these things are the same. Okay, any questions? That's a skill you must have. Yes. I'm sorry. Everything that we do from this point forward is based on all of this. Go ahead. So those are always going to be the same? What's going to be the same? Yes. The oxidizing the Always, yes. But you have to know which half reaction is oxidation. You have to know that I'm balancing the electrons in the overall reaction. Okay? You have to know who's getting reduced. What if I said to you this? This is a Regis question. What's happening to the chlorine? Yes, right. So chlorine is spectating. Is chlorine changing its charge? No. no. So it's neither oxidized nor reduced. Okay. Let's do another one. This is number two on your homework. I'm going to do the reaction. Okay. So. So get rid of this reaction. Get rid of the bubbling in the background, kind of like the theme kind of thing. Okay. So. Looks like uh, my zinc is uh, definitely getting dissolved because it fell in. All right. So yeah, it was a it was a much bigger piece of metal. And where do you find the electrons? They would be the reactants too. Because like, I know it's not going to always be zinc. Where I find the electron? It would be you know on the reference table. Yeah. It would be you know how you change from like one two three. How do you know like if it's like one? Two, I'll give you an example. Okay, let's do another reaction. Okay, because I think just from seeing it, you'll see it, just from seeing an example. Okay, this is number two of your homework. Okay, now this is a very famous reaction called a thermite reaction. I'm going to do it small scale. Okay, please pay attention. I have people are doing other, what, other homework in my class right now. Do you guys know this already? Okay, where do I do my black marker? Did you guys 1600 on your SAT? Me no. Me no. I don't think so. I can't remember honestly. So long ago. 
Okay, that's what Mrs. Vaughn said, that you were like a genius and you got like a perfect No, there's no way I was a genius. I was just really tall. <laughs> What's that? Uh -huh. Oh, I, well, I was producing hydrogen and I put it a kind of balloon over the system. I kept, kept pumping it with more hydrogen gas under pressure and forced it to a balloon. No, I, I do it like a series of steps. I can show you how I do it. I, I, I pump it into a couple different ways so that I'm not doing direct, I'm not putting the balloon next to the acid. Okay, here we go, party people. Up here, my fault, my, my time. Listen, I'm going to take pure aluminum foil and I'm going to react it with iron oxide. This is a form of rust. Iron 203. Is this the formula you have for number two? No, it's going to hit that half reaction homework was the homework. Yes, okay. Now, here's what happens. It single replaces with the iron. So it makes aluminum oxide plus, I'm sorry, uh, plus pure iron. Is that the reaction I have written? Well, I haven't balanced, I haven't balanced yet. So let's balance the reaction. Two irons, two irons. Okay, two aluminums. Uh, and my oxygens are balanced. Okay, so am I good? Okay, now, what do I have in front of me? Well, first of all, is this a redox reaction? Yes. How could I find out? What's one way? Yeah, if you see a standalone element, which means if you can find me a zero, you've got a redox reaction because it's not a zero when it bonds to something. Boom, you're done. Or you can do what? You can assign oxidation states, and I like to do this, negative two individually, times three, negative six. This has to be plus six overall, since there's two irons, what's the charge of each iron? Plus, plus three, it's the skill, first skill. Aluminum's negative two, negative six overall, but aluminum only has one charge anyway, which is plus three individually for the same reasons. Okay, now, let's do this reaction. This is a really cool reaction. I think I'll do it larger scale tomorrow, but I'm gonna do it small scale right now. This reaction was the only reaction done on um, intercontinental soil of the United States. I should say, I should say on the continental soil. The um, the Japanese actually made it to the um, west coast of California. Now they knew they couldn't attack, they didn't have the wherewithal in on World War II to go that far because they were hurting with their navy in World War II, but they wanted to send us a message. So if I'm, not, if I'm mistaken, I know that they were able to send some kind of boat with a biplane or some kind of plane, and they were trying to just scare us by dropping these thermite reactions. These reactions, they would start burn very, very hot and very fast. In fact, this burns so fast and so hot, the energy release makes molten iron. I'll do that tomorrow. Yes? Wait, are you talking about the balloons they sent over? Yeah, but that was started on the ship, I think. Yeah, well, like what they did was they took the, there's a jet stream that goes through there. So yeah. the jet stream starts in Japan. What they did was they- was, they it a, was it a man balloon? No, they, they were on man. So they just tie the bombs on there. And then by the time it gets to where Washington is or Canada, like the reaction would go off, it would be on like a timer or something, and then mm. just drop and... These had to be manned. Oh. You had to physically start this. So I'm not sure if it's the same thing, but you could be right, or we're melding stories together. Why would it be manned? You have to physically add some activation energy. You couldn't put a timer. You really couldn't time it. This is something that needs to be started. Um, there was definitely... Like a spark? Like a big spark. You really do. And then just drop this big mess down. It, it, it's, not, it's not automated enough. Not that I think, but I can look up the story. In any case, there was one dropped on United States soil, and it didn't do much. It burned in the road, and that was it. But um, any case, let me show you this reaction. So what I have here are steel spheres. Okay, if you look carefully, okay, these are steel, but what's on the outside of them? Yeah, a lot of rust, and that rust is iron 
oxide. In fact, this is iron three oxide. So if you look very carefully, these have a lot of rust on them. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these steel spheres, because I can't save balls in high school, all right? I'm going to put aluminum on them. So I take the spheres, okay, and I put them with some aluminum. Now there's my aluminum, okay? And my iron oxide is the reddish brown material, the rust, the oxide of iron, okay? that I keep outside my window just to get rusted up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike these. When I strike these, my hope is that I get a spark big enough and that will show where the thermite reaction occurred. So let's see how we can do this. Okay, so all I got is one sphere. Okay. There's a monster. Okay, now, so Christmas in July. Okay, so here I go. Let me get some glasses on because it can make some big sparks. Okay, so here we go. So I have I have my 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 sphere that has aluminum in it and my other sphere that has the iron but the iron oxide. So what I'm going to do is just strike them. Now my hope is when I strike them that there's enough rust that hits the iron, the aluminum, that's right here, that creates the exothermic reactions. Very exothermic because aluminum oxide is very stable. So I'm going to try that a few times. Okay, see if you can see it. Oh, oh my Ow, my hand's up. Uh, where they go is exactly where there's enough rust. Okay. So there's not a lot of rust on the outside, but clearly that's different than the two hitting, right? Smell it. <laughs> all right, maybe I just I found all the rust. Like, here we go. All right, so you get the idea, okay? Clearly, where those sparks are, where those right bolt lights on before. Okay, so clearly where those sparks were, that's the reaction. Now what happened? Aluminum became what? Aluminum oxide. So if that's true, I should be missing some solid aluminum. So when I put this on the camera, where you saw the biggest sparks is where the aluminum is missing. Okay, so you see right here, That gap is not just for me ripping it, that's the missing aluminum. Where did it become? It became aluminum oxide powder somewhere. So all these little holes you see represent the missing aluminum solid that became aluminum oxide somewhere in this room. So every time you saw a spark, part of the aluminum, let's see, there's there some of them, part of the aluminum, okay, became aluminum oxide. Okay. Now, let's go right to half reactions. This is a skill you must have. First of all, let's start with oxidation. Okay, oxidation. I take aluminum zero. Why am I picking the metal? What can only a standalone metal do? Oxidize. Metals never become negative. So that has to become positive. Standalone. So zero becomes aluminum plus three. Notice I took the aluminum out of the oxide. For those that are watching that part of a region's curriculum, okay, you could keep it in and do some other things, but we're just going to make these very simple half reactions. Now, zero to plus three. It's the difference of how many electrons? Three. 
where do I put the electrons? And this is the key here. I put the electrons so that it's zero. It, no, the key is so that they're the same on both sides, not necessarily zero. If I put three electrons over here, negative three and zero is what? Negative. negative three. This side's plus three. No good. We have to balance mass and charge. So I need three electrons, and I write it three e negative one. Each electron's negative one. I have three of them. So a negative three plus a plus three gives me a zero on this side, zero on this side. Who else do I have? Who else is changing? The iron in iron 3 oxide. So this becomes Fe plus 3. And it goes to what? Iron 0. Where do electrons go? And how many do I need? Three of them. OK. Now my friends in chemistry, why is this one the oxidation half reaction? Why is the top one? What is happening to electrons? Are they gained or lost? Yeah. Right, Leo, losing electrons, oxidation. Electrons are being what here? Gained. Gur, gaining electrons. Electrons are flowing from who? The metal to the ion. Three electrons. That's a redox reaction. Who got oxidized? Specifics. Aluminum, zero. Who specifically got reduced? Fe, Fe plus three. Don't say Fe. Don't say iron. You're implying over here, and I'm going to go crazy. It's Fe plus three. Who is the oxidizing agent? Think opposite. Who got oxidized? All right, Fe plus three. Who is the reducing agent? The one who got oxidized. Okay, that is what you need to understand right now. So now we actually had one more, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, what was the other one? H2Br. Okay, so let's do that one quickly. Okay, H2. So we had H2 hydrogen plus Br. And it made 2HBr, correct? OK. Now, is this, an ox is this a redox reaction? Yeah. Yeah. I see some zeros. Right away, boom. Element elements in their elemental form, zeros. Br has to be negative 1. Hydrogen's plus 1. I've signed my oxidation states. Let's go write our half reactions. OK. I'm going to start with H2, 0, going to how many H pluses? Two. two H pluses. Now, what's the overall charge on this side? Zero. zero. Overall charge on this side? Plus <coughs> two. So how many electrons do I need to make both sides have the same charge? Two electrons. And then I have Br. 0 goes to 2Br negatives. How many electrons and where do they go so that both sides have the same charge? You need how many electrons where? The reactant or the product side? Reactant. You need two of them. Negative 2 plus a 0. And notice something. Half reactions don't have to be 0 on both sides. They just have to have the same charge. Notice this is negative 2 on one side. A negative 2 and a 0 is negative 2. This side is negative 2. So don't fall in love with the fact that both sides have to be 0. Both sides of a half reaction have to have the same charge. You are conservation of mass, conservation of charge. How did I know there were two guys? Because I have to balance out on both sides. Yes? Why is it negative 2, though, that you bring over? Well, electrons are only negative. So when I bring the electrons, I'm bringing the negativity only. This side is negative 2. This side is 0. If I put the two electrons on this side, it would be negative 4. This side 0. If I put the two negatives here, this side is negative 2, like this side. OK? Notice who's oxidizing. OK? Sub oxidizing is what? 
Who specifically is oxidizing? Who is losing electrons? Wait, is the two negative electrons subtracting? Uh-uh, uh-uh, Stop. Stop with the subtracting negative. Listen, I either lose electrons or I gain electrons. Easy way to think about it. Electrons are always negative. No, I understand that. Right, so if, so your question is? If, 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 if I'm right, is the circle making it a negative? Like yeah, this side is zero, but two electrons make this side negative two, which has to be because this side is negative two. There's two Br negative ions here. So you add the enough electrons so that both sides of a half reaction have the same charge. It's not always going to be zero. Who specifically lost electrons? Now we don't have metals here. We don't have a glaring standalone metal. But look at your reactions. This is going up, isn't it? Yeah, so the H2 is, is getting oxidized. It is sending electrons where? From the H2 to the Br2. So my friends in chemistry, in this case, the hydrogen is getting oxidized. H2 is hydrogen. Who's getting reduced? <coughs> the bromide. Always picking from this side. Who's the oxidizing agent? Opposite, the one that got reduced. Who's the reducing agent? The one who got oxidized. We never pick from this. Any questions? That's an utmost important skill you have to have. No, they're both nonmetals. Oh, okay, okay, all right. and, and hydrogen are both nonmetals. But here's an example where electrons are being passed around and you don't have a metal involved. Okay, I just don't want you to say, hey, it has to be a metal. No, here's an example you don't have to have a metal. Electrons are being passed around, but you have to use your oxidation states. This is going up because you're losing negatives, oxidation. This one's going down in charge. You're gaining electrons. That's why it's reduction. Your charge is dropping. Okay? Yes, first. The one who's the oxidizing agent is the one who gets reduced. If, a, if you're sick, listen, bromide is gaining electrons, right? So it is pulling electrons from you. So therefore, you're getting oxidized. I'm get, if, I'm, if I'm helping you get oxidized, I myself gets reduced. If I'm helping you get reduced by gaining electrons, I'm helping you get reduced, I'm pulling electrons, I get oxidized. That's why it's opposite. Yes? Is Br the substance reducing Br is the substance getting reduced in this example because it's the one that's gaining electrons. But you're right, the size of the atom does drive it, but there's going to be some instances where that, that the stuff that you're pointing out, I love the chemistry you're thinking about, it almost always is going to follow that route, but there's going to be some instances where hydrogen can give up its electron, there's going to be some instances where that's not going to be perfect, okay? So you follow your charges. What's going to help you understand that is this. Now, there's something besides size of the radius. It's called uh, thermodynamics. It's called... Um, Gibbs for energy, it's called entropy. These are all things in the next class that provide a pathway, voltage pathway. So it's not as simple as that answer, but that's part of the answer, yes. Okay? All right. So what we're going to do now is you have that green four in front of you. I want you to get into your groups, lab groups, or teams, and I want you to solve these questions. These questions, which you have to know, these are regions questions, and I want you to put them in the form today in this classroom. So this is your homework. You're doing it right now in your groups, okay?